Ace's video exposing Clinton's that America needs to see. Leader of WikiLeaks Julian Assange is sharing some facts about Hillary Clinton once again. Clearly we already know Hillary is corrupt, but this may take the cake. In the interview below Assange discusses how one email in all of Hillary's emails stand out above the rest. He shares that all serious analysts know, and even the U.S. government has agreed, that some Saudi figures have been supporting ISIS and funding ISIS, but the dodge has always been that it is some rogue princes using their oil money to do whatever they like, but actually the government disapproves. However, this Hillary Clinton email says that it's not just a rogue prince, but the actual governments of Saudi Arabia and Qatar. When asked more details about the relations between Hillary and these governments Assange shares a startling discovery. These governments are funding the Clinton Foundation, buying arms from the US and funding ISIS and ISIL. He shares under Hillary Clinton, and the Clinton emails reveal a significant discussion of it, the biggest ever arms deal in the world was made with Saudi Arabia, more than $80 billion. During her tenure, the total arms exports from the U.S. doubled in dollar value. She's even more wrapped up in criminal activities than we originally thought and using the U.S. to arm the enemy. Watch the video below. Breaking first full Supreme Court ruling in over a year made Obama furious. The Supreme Court decides the fate of Islam taught in the public schools. They have decided that the children will learn about radical Islam and how can they stop it. According to Judge Gorsuch, the government shouldn't get involved in religion but this is a different matter. In school, children are taught that Islam is a peaceful religion but the circumstances show the opposite. The full panel of nine Supreme Court justices met Monday to decide the fate of a case with very close ties to Barack Obama and the Democrats. The Supreme Court ruled 5-4, with Justice Gorsuch casting the tiebreaker, reports Trendify. They decided that the only part of the Islam history taught to our children in public schools will be the one of radical Islam and what they can do to help stop it. Judge Gorsuch, in his first opinion for the High Court, wrote. The government certainly has no business being involved in religion, but this isnt a government issue or a religious issue. This is about the judicial branch interpreting the laws as they apply to the teaching of religion. We should be teaching any religions in this country besides standard Judeo-Christianity, as our founders wanted, and we certainly shouldn't be filling the children with lies about Islam being a religion of peace when they see the carnage on the news almost every day. He added. It is our duty as Americans first and judges second to safeguard the way our children are indoctrinated. The Obama administration, after winning this case on appeal in the 17th District Court, has remained with no power or any influence and friends in the judiciary. With this ruling ends the teaching of Islam in public schools, which is a major hit to Obama's beloved Muslims. This is in addition to the ruling from just a week or so ago that forbids the teaching of Islamic tenets or Sharia as a part of world history as well. This is a major win for our country and Christianity. Thank God for our president and his new appointee. Now we can get back to respecting our true values and the normal, everyday worshipping of the only real God. Many things that occurred under Obama administration will change now that Trump's in charge. Thankfully, the Supreme Court decided to stop lying to the children in public schools about Islam. Do you support the Supreme Court with this decision? Goody Goes Nuclear on Live TV, Uncovers Enormous Scam by Obama and Hillary. Damn is Thray Gowdy great. Would we be able to get three cheers for Thray Gowdy please? Much appreciated. Would you be able to suppose you were a criminal and needed to confront Thray as a prosecutor? Discuss striking dread in the heart, envision you are a criminal and blameworthy and are seeking after a supernatural occurrence or an awful prosecutor and you see Thray stroll in. He more likely than not sunk the hearts and smashed the fantasies of thousands of criminals throughout the years. Presently he is doing likewise to Hillary and Obama and it is brilliant to watch. 
Frey went on Fox News for a normal interview and wound up dropping a sensation that uncovered some genuine wrongdoing at the DNC. Also, similar to a decent prosecutor, Three just did it by asking the one inquiry Hillary and Obama are panicked to reply. Since in the event that they do they are sunk. Sentenced. Liable. Here are the means by which it went down, Martha McCallum got some information about Jay Johnson's declaration yesterday about the race hacking. Three stated, I was interested in what Obama administration knew and when and what efforts they took to help the Russians, or to notify potential victims. You just played a clip where we had a victim, the DNC. Not only did they not cooperate with Johnson, they did not turn the server over to the FBI, I think it's a little ironic now to criticize, some Democrats are, Johnson and Jim Comey and others for not giving enough in 2016, when you had a really good piece of evidence you did not bother turning over. And afterward, he asked the one inquiry that will devastate the Democrats everlastingly, discussing why they would not participate with the FBI. Three stated, let me hazard a wild guess. There may be something else on that server they did not want law enforcement to see? That's where you start. I do not like speculating, but I have dealt in the past with victims who would not cooperate with investigations. Typically, the reason is, there's something else you do not want law enforcement to see. Watch the video. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. Trump admin takes down Obama's secret cargo truck scandal at Mexican border. Just when you thought Obama was a total joke comes a new bombshell report from Judicial Watch that shows he was much worse than anyone previously thought. This is a scandal that dwarfs the fast and furious debacle where Obama had his administration work with drug cartels and gun runners in order to stop them. Advertisement As with most things Obama-related it ended badly. For Barack and for America. Thankfully in just six short months Trump is ending the Obama-era abuses and making this country safe again. In a major change from the weak Obama-era regulations, the Trump administration is finally getting tough with border inspections. Trump is actually allowing customs officers to screen all cargo trucks entering the U.S. from Mexico. Advertisement According to Judicial Watch, Mexican drug cartels are foaming at the mouth as one of their many transit scams is no longer. U.S. Customs and Border Protection uses X-ray technology and other non-intrusive tools to screen 100% of cargo trucks crossing the southern border. 100%. Whereas during Obama's eight years we only did a random screening of trucks crossing the border. We felt like we were the welcoming committee and not like we were guarding our borders, said veteran U.S. Customs agent Patricia Kramer. The order was to facilitate traffic not to stop any illegal drugs from entering the country, Kramer added before leveling her gaze at Obama and saying, we want to enforce the law. That's what we signed up for. Kramer is a canine handler stationed at the Nogales port of entry in Arizona and is the front line in the war on drugs. She said illicit drugs are pouring in through the southern border, especially massive quantities of fentanyl an opiate painkiller that the Drug Enforcement Administration DEA, says is more potent than morphine and is killing our children in record numbers. Approximately 471,000 trucks pass through the U.S. Mexico border monthly, according to the U.S. Department of Transportation. Thray Gowdy just caught leaker right on the spot exposes him on live TV. Various leaks from the White House have been submitted to the liberal mainstream media ever since Donald Trump became the President of the United States. The leaks were issued with a clear intention to bring damage to the new administration and to make Trump's job as a president even harder. Something like this happened again, right after Dan Coats, the Director of National Intelligence testified behind closed doors after he was assured by Representatives Adam Schiff and Thray Gowdy that their conversation will remain private. Days after they talked, 
everything Coates stated, became a headline in the newspapers. Gowdy had an interview in which he said, About eight hours ago, Adam Schiff and I looked Dan Coates in the eyes and we assured him that there would be no selective leaking of his testimony to us. And I'll be damned if eight hours later, there are not three different leaks with what he told us. So if anyone is questioning why congressional investigations are not taken seriously and are viewed as political exercises, you need to look no further than the fact that we looked one of our intelligence officials in the eyes and promised him there would be no selective leaking. And here I am being asked about it not even eight hours later. Gowdy also said that there were eight people present while Coates was giving his testimony, and by that, the leaker must be one of those eight people. He continued. I cannot tell you who it is. But I can tell you this, you are going to have a chilling effect on other witnesses who want to share classified, sensitive information when it makes its way to the headlines before the transcripts even dry. I can tell you this. I was not me and I do not think it was Representative Schiff. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Rush Drops Nuke, Reveals the True Identity of Barack Hussein Obama The mainstream media has been desperately trying to destroy Donald Trump for months. Now, they have become so desperate to take him down that they have resorted to reporting fake news on him. Last week, conservative radio host Rush Limbaugh said he has finally had enough. After Trump issued his laptop ban, which banned certain electronics from being brought on aircrafts flying out of terror-risk Middle Eastern countries, the mainstream media tried to make this look xenophobic. Rush began his discussion of this by reading from a Washington Post piece entitled Trump won't allow you to use iPads or laptops on certain airlines. Trump, Rush stressed, according to Daily Wire. Donald Trump is denying you, if you're on a certain airline flying into the United States. Donald Trump is denying you the chance to use your electronic device. He continued reading the following quote from the article. From Tuesday on, passengers traveling to the U.S. from 10 airports in eight Muslim-majority countries will not be allowed to have iPads, laptops or any communications device larger than a smartphone in the cabin of the plane. If you are traveling from Egypt, Jordan, Kuwait, Morocco, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, or the UAE on Egypt Air, Emirates, Etihad Airways, Kuwait Airways, Qatar Airways, Royal Air Maroc, Royal Jordanian Airlines, Saudi Arabian Airlines, or Turkish Airlines, and you want to use your laptop on the flight, you are probably out of luck. So why is the United States doing this, and how can it get away with it? Don't you mean why is Trump doing this and how can Trump get away with it? Asked Rush. Well, the story here says that the U.S. says it's not all about security. There is an alternative explanation. The next part of the article suggested that the banning of laptops by Trump might just be about retaliation. Three of the airlines that have been targeted for these measures, Emirates, Etihad Airways and Qatar Airways, have long been accused by their U.S. competitors of receiving massive effective subsidies from their governments. These airlines have been quietly worried for months that President Trump was going to retaliate. This may be the retaliation, the United States is weaponizing interdependence. Rush pointed out that the British are also barring laptops and tablets from cabins on some international flights, something that the mainstream media is leaving out of their coverage. Wait, there's another government involved here? Said Rush. Wait, 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 wait. We just kind of read U.S. and British officials. You mean the Brits have instituted the same ban on electronic devices on certain airliners coming into the U.K. just like we have in the U.S.? Well, Shazam! It looks like somebody other than Trump is doing the same thing Trump's doing. I wonder if Trump's making him do it. So we are now being led to believe that Donald Trump colluded with the UK to deny airplane passengers the right to use their laptops, their iPads, and their iPhones, he added mockingly. Is that right? UK, United States, Trump colludes with everybody.
D.O. you know what this really is about? Cause I have that here, said Limbaugh, who then destroyed the liberal articles by detailing the actual facts behind the laptop ban. Rush, laptop ban on flights is based on intelligence about an ISIS plot to target the West gathered during the raid on Yemen which killed Navy SEAL. The intelligence centered around Al-Qaeda's successful development of compact battery bombs that fit inside laptops or other devices, sources claimed. In other words, there is a credible threat. It is a credible threat based on intel that was gathered during the raid in Yemen, in January, a raid that Obama had approved before he left office. The military commanders said they couldn't launch until they had a new moon. They needed a totally dark sky. There wasn't a new moon until after Trump was inaugurated. Trump signed off on the deal. He had nothing to do with the strategy, the actual operation. He just signed off on it. The raid was conducted and we know the details. They somehow knew we were coming, claiming they heard the drone of our drones, they heard the sound, and a SEAL was killed and the terrorists were hiding and dressed as men and women and children and so forth inside mosques or what have you. And everybody proclaimed the mission an abject failure. Trump said, no, no, there was some really valuable intel gathered. People poo-pooed Trump as insane, stupid, and a lying sack of you know what. It turns out there was intel gathered, and the intel gathered from the raid claimed that ISIS has perfected bombs that work and go inside batteries, inside electronic devices that you would use on the cabin of an airplane, a laptop, an iPad, or an iPhone. And when they learned of this intel, they banned flights from 10 different countries where the intel said people had been perfecting this. There is a solid, specific reason for this to happen. It's not because Trump hates anybody. It's not because Trump doesn't want you using your iPhone. It's not because Trump's flipping off the business community. It's not because Trump's a xenophobe or a bigot. It's because there was a credible threat in both the UK and the United States. And the only place that you will find the details of that story is in the UK Daily Mail. You won't see it in the New York Times. You won't see it in the Washington Post. You won't see it anywhere in America because the objective is not to tell the truth. The objective is to destroy Trump. Share this story if you agree with Rush Limbaugh. Look what just happened to Trump hating Lib who was caught in disgusting underage sex scandal. In a typical desperate cry by a failed liberal crack pop to remain relevant, has been quasi actor slash comedian Alec Baldwin has written his memoirs. Memoirs of what? When he called his small daughter a thoughtless pig. Well, as it turns out since this has been nothing great to really talk about, except maybe the first time he bedded Kim Basinger back in the day. In his book, nevertheless, a memoir this sicko has brought up an interesting fact from his past. One that might even get him and many other people in hot water with the authorities. Apparently when sicko Alec Baldwin was 47 he had intimate relations with a 17-year-old for the movie Minnie's first time. Of course in the book he claims he was tricked by the producers and had no idea of this fact. The sick Baldwin wrote in his book, I was 47 and it never occurred to me to ask how old Nikki Reed was. When I found out, just as we finished, that she was 17, I flipped out on the producers, who had told me something different. Now here is where things get entertaining. One of movie's producers Dana Brunetti, who later produced House of Cards and Fifty Shades of Grey, went full beast mode on Twitter with a barrage of responses. Director Nick Gov also agreed that Alec Baldwin, and everyone else involved in the project, was always aware Nikki Reed was 16 and since there was never any nudity there was nothing to worry about. He even went on to say they sometimes had trouble communicating with Reed because she was a typical 16-year-old and that he and Baldwin had to keep reminding each other of her age. It's indeed so sad to see a comedic actor who was at one time funny and relevant resort to these kinds of tactics to get back into the limelight. People can lose their livelihoods and reputations because of lies like this, but sadly, he's won, he's once again front page news.